All right, what's going on, guys? This is Logan with West Desert Shooter. I am here with Jade. This is WDS. There we go. <laughs> and today we're just going to do kind of a silly podcast where we go through uh, videos and go through the comments section, read you guys' comments, and then just kind of off the cuff respond to them and just talk about some of the conversations that happen in the comments. Um, it's a very interesting thing to do on YouTube, and uh, sometimes you get some pretty dang funny ones. Sometimes you get some that really piss me off. You get so there's a range of emotions we're gonna go through, but uh, we're gonna. So here's how it's gonna work. We're gonna go through specific videos and then pick out the comment section of that video, roll through it for a little while, change videos, and then go from there. So if you guys want to follow along. Our first video we're going to talk about is actually the Hornady 6mm ARC intro, the first look video. Um, this one has actually gotten quite a few views right out of the bat. Um, I think I launched this just around a month ago, and it's already got quite a few comments on it. So, Jade, why don't you pull up some comments, read them out loud, and we'll kind of go from there. This is my favorite part of your YouTube channel, is reading everybody's comments. So, there are excellent comments. There are terrible comment, comments, and then there are comments I'm like, I don't know. Anyway, this is going to be good, so. that's After I post the video, that's one of Jade's favorite things to do is to check in on the comments as it goes. She'll bring up comments I haven't seen yet because that's kind of what her gig is. She likes to get in there and see what people are saying about the videos, so. See, but I never respond to them. I'm not that type to be like, be nice. That's so rude. What are you doing? I'm not going to be like that wife, so. But on that on that same token, one thing I can jump into real quick, I absolutely love when the subscribers who I can tell who the subscribers are, I recognize their names on most people, when they get in and defend what I've done against like someone who's talking shit. I think that's hilarious. Like I've seen my buddy Like View Outdoors, um, shout out to him, but I've seen him get in there and talk about talk and respond to people who Defending are like you. What is this guy doing? He doesn't know what he's talking about. He'll jump in there and be like, hey, Logan does know what he's doing, and you need to watch more of his videos, essentially. So <laughs> so anyone who does that, I really appreciate it. I think it's hilarious when that happens. And uh, that it's taken a long time to get there, but we're getting there, so that's all good. <laughs> so again, guys, Hornady 6mm ARC first look video. Um, let's jump into these comments. So one of the first ones that pulls up as you scroll into the comments uh, Jade, what's our first comment here? All right, this is by, and I'm 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 calling people out. So this is Kick Blake, right when the uh, video launched. He said, Hornady designed a new precision cartridge for the AR-15 platform, dot, dot, dot. So let's do a first look in a bolt gun. And so what he's referring to here is that the 6mm ARC is touted as the new hot AR-15 cartridge. And then I used a Uinta Precision bolt action upper to look at it, but he's saying like, well, why did you do this in a bolt gun? And my Uinta Precision is an AR-15. That's what some people may miss about these rifles, which are really cool. Um, you just remove the pins on the lower, swap uppers, and you've gone from a semi-auto to a bolt gun. And I get what he's saying. He wants to see the performance out of a gas gun, but it is still is an AR-15. It fits in the AR-15 magazine as well as uh, from what the Ultimate Reloader Gavin Gear over on Gavin Tube says, uh, from a gas gun and bolt gun, you're only gonna lose about 1% velocity. So, I mean, that's the rifle I had access to was the bolt, was the Uinta Precision Bolt Action Upper. So I, I mean, it's expensive to build guns, guys. Everybody knows this. So I've seen a ton of comments for people to just be like, hey, why don't you buy a gas gun and compare it that way and they just expect me to just go run off and buy a gas gun well unfortunately that's not quite how easy it is for me but uh yeah let's see here jade's going through some comments you're scrolling past a lot of them see that's a thing <laughs> i don't know what they're talking about so i don't know if they're good comments i love looking for i mean to me i feel like they're like they know what they're talking about but maybe clearly they don't so i mean Right there, uh, user Tommy Two Gun says, "I'd like to see what lighter rounds would do, including varmint rounds." Absolutely, man. I I think the six millimeter ARC would actually like really stand out if you dropped an eighty seven grain V Max in there. Uh, it's gonna have a decent BC, but it's gonna be going a lot faster than the one hundred eight grain 
that'd be a nasty little round with an 87 grain VMAX in there. You could easily kill a deer with that thing. It'd probably be going, let's see, 2850, maybe 2900 feet a second with an 87 grain. Um, someone's asking if they could do a 105 grain bullet in the 6.5 Grendel and get similar performance. Sure, you'll get similar velocities possibly, but there's a big difference between the ballistic coefficient of a 6 millimeter in a 105 grain and a 6.5 Grendel in a 105 grain. Someone's asking if I'm going to run this as my PRS gun or stick with the 6 Creedmoor. Um, I'm going to be sticking with my 6 Creedmoor because I built that specifically for PRS, but I'm definitely not against using ARC for a PRS competition or two, just for fun, see what it does. Um, you seen anything here you want to take a look at, Jade? I'm confused about what this comment is because it seems like a compliment, but then it seems like an insult in the same sense. So Kirk Martin says, advanced rifle cartridge. More like another redundant cartridge, all in caps, because he really needed to make his point there. Yeah, they do that. By all means, build, buy, repeat, but call it what it is. But then he compliments and says, great video. So, um, so yeah, yeah that, that's... I see that as a positive comment because he's not mad at me. He's just wondering, like, well, why the hell even do this? Um, and I get it. There are many. I mean, we're getting to the point where there's just a cartridge to cover just about everything you need. But the 6 millimeter ARC, in my opinion, is the first good 6 millimeter for an AR-15. Like, I didn't even know that the Nosler existed in 6 mil for the AR until after the arc was out, but I'd never heard of it. Like, never heard of it. So that sounds like just a, a big lose on their end. So, I mean, I, I, I like the 6mm ARC because they designed it around the heavy bullets. That's what people want to shoot right now. So all four shooting heavy bullets, especially in the AR-15, that's a good time. I like to read good comments, too. So Lakeview Outdoors says damn that you pierre you pierre <laughs> oh dear well, let me restart that one <laughs> damn that upr is sexy topped with the ep4 the six ar well six arc sounds like an excellent coyote round you've definitely got my attention yeah exactly so i've, I've actually already mentioned lake the outdoors and uh, here he is leaving a good comment again and yeah, so what he's referring to there is got I've got the Arkin EP4 optic on top of the UPR15. I felt like the EP4 was a nice compact size. It really complemented the AR15 package overall, but it still had long range performance with the, the 6 arc. So I'm all about putting that combo together. It turned out really awesome, as well as Uinta Precision uh, coated that rifle brown for me. So that's uh, like one of the only um, I think it's called like shadow bronze or shadow brown or something like that um, it's it's a really cool color and and there's there's a ton a ton of positive comments on here and i really appreciate every single one of them guys it's just that the people with the negative comments kind of stir up more feelings in me where i kind of want to i have a reaction and an answer for them so i'm glancing over quite a few of these just hey great video i appreciate it. like I genuinely appreciate that guys I really do you're it's not that I've never it's not that I didn't read the comment it's just that for the sake of this I don't want to sit here and just pat myself on the back repeatedly like oh yeah look at me I did such a great job but uh, I just kind of want to get into the stuff that's more of uh, conversational so there's a lot of comments there's 274 comments on this video so there's a lot to right, right there practical precision shooting what's he saying all right I'm a Volk shooter, but man, I hope this thing takes off. It looks like you're getting quite a bit of terminal energy on that 10 inch at 800 yards. What was the 3 8 still or, or was that 3 8 still or 1 4th inch? Yeah, so what he's talking about, he's a 224 Valkyrie shooter. We stay on that for a second. Yeah. Um, yeah, so he's a 224 Valkyrie shooter and he's questioning, well, he's saying that the 6 arc has a lot of energy on the plate because the plate was moving quite a bit. And uh, he was questioning the, the thickness of the steel there. So that was a 3 8 inch, 10 inch circle AR 500 plate. So 3 8 thick. That thing weighs probably six pounds, somewhere in there. Um, that AR 500 is definitely really heavy for what it is. So, 
Um, yeah, that's the three eight steel and the two two four Valkyrie versus the six arc. I just released a video against those, um, so you can see and hear my opinions in that one. But I I definitely like them both. Um, looks like Jade's got something else pulled up here. <laughs> so Josh Lower commented and said. They are trying to end all the old school great cartridges with their new, which he spelled their wrong, so good for you. Their new bullshit ones. It's a damn shame. Then he commented on his comment to continue his, because he wasn't done talking about it. There's only so much you can do with the rifle cartridge. You can't cheat physics. They've done nothing with this cartridge that hasn't been tried before. All right, so Josh... Um... Yeah, so he's getting here saying that the, all the old school great cartridges. My only thing about that, like I mentioned a minute ago, there's not really any good 6 mil options for the AR-15. And that's really what Hornady's hitting home here. As well, if I've seen Hornady's video from themselves say, they're not trying to get rid of the 6.5 Grendel. They're not trying to get rid of the 224 Valkyrie. They're still going to produce ammo for those other cartridges as well as the 6mm ARC, which I think is really awesome of Hornady to flat out say that. So I, I really do think this is something new, and uh, it offers something new to the market for the AR-15. So it's always good to see stuff like that. Here's one that you didn't get to answer. Uh, Matt Wilson wants to know how much are you into rifle weighs. Do you know how much it weighs? I don't have that off the top of my head. You're probably looking eight to nine pounds um i can't i would i would think probably eight pounds empty and then maybe 10 pounds fully loaded bipod and a scope with a mount so we'll see how that goes i don't even know if that's a good one i don't know what the heck he's talking about no it brings up a good point uh thomas thomas dom brings up a point 300 feet per second slower than a 243 and then he puts quotations around it. Boring. Um, it is slower than the 243, but a 243 is an AR-10 sized cartridge, and you can't fit it in an AR-15. So, a 243 versus the 6 arc is kind of a mute conversation when you think about it, because the 243 just doesn't work in an AR-15. So it's not an option. Mm. It's the next best thing in an AR-15, really. What else? By all means, I'm not being mean to your subscribers, but I'll be mean if they're mean. Oh yeah, I am too. And <laughs> and so I I get in there and you probably shouldn't respond to the trollers, but the way I look at it, it's 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 my channel. Yeah. And so I'll jump in there and I'll let them know whose channel this is, you know. I'll get in there and fight with them. It's all good. I'll scrap yeah, with them and if they're just if they're relentless, they get blocked and then I move on with my life. There you go. Ooh, this is this is a good one. I love, love when people write in all caps. But he doesn't start out with all caps. Yeah, his first sentence is uh, lowercase. And then he gets then he wants to be more meaningful. He he presents himself. But uh George Zink says, as a reloader of or for fifty years, I believe this is where it starts all caps. All caps. All these new rounds, period, defeat period. Why are there so many periods? I don't know. The game, period. I will stay with my 6 millimeter 284 and 22 or 243, period. My 223 WSSM does no more than cut a yoke down as a fur trapper and hunter. I use both 17 rem or my 204 or 204 Ruger? 204 Ruger. Hmm. Yeah, so <laughs> My favorite's when people respond. All right, so what did John Smith say? Here? So John Smith responds back, huh? <laughs> the whole point of this cartridge is that you can load it to an AR and have 25 shots ready to go that are capable of 1,000 yards with minimal recoil. All the other AR cartridges are either too small, like 5.56, or too big, like the Grendel, and up. The 6mm is probably ideal. You can shoot varmint 6mm bullets all the way up to 103 grain ELDX for deer. I strongly stand with John Smith on this one. Um, yeah, so like that, I got other guys bringing up the same point. Uh, my big cartridges are better performing. Well, sure, but you can't fit those big cartridges in an AR-15. I mean, I, that's as far as I kind of want to go back on that. 
Yeah. Um, one thing I did know, or I've picked up on, I've had a few people ask me if it's a type one or type two Grendel bolt. And from Hornady themselves, they say it is a type two Grendel bolt to be compatible with the six millimeter ARC. <laughs> no, wait, go back to that one. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce his name. RDSII64. More semi-auto, please. Why don't you pull up the replies there? <laughs> so he responded. See, like, this This is me getting in there with the trolls. Uh, he goes, S- you, West Desert Shooter, says, send me one. I like bolt guns. He responds back to Logan, saying, no worries. I still dig your channel. Your semi-auto stuff back in the day was what got me interested in your stuff. The next time I get the bolt gun itch, I do own two. I may try one of those bolt gun uppers for my AR lowers. There you go. So I've I've seen this a couple times. Now, granted, it, that was actually a polite comment. He just said, more semi-auto, please. Sometimes I read these comments, and in my head, I'm like, oh, this guy's being an ass. No, and, that was and, a nice one. No, 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 but I'm, on other examples, I've I've seen it where they really are being an ass, and then I'll comment back and just be like, Really, man? Like, what's going on? What's up with that? And then they completely change their tone, and they're, like, the nicest people. <laughs> like, they just put that out there to, uh, like, to get attention. And once I give them the attention, then they're like, oh, no, we're good, man. We're friends. It's all, like, <laughs> stuff like that makes me laugh really hard. But I think you two take it in the wrong context. You can't read their tone over a comment online. Yeah, but if they're straight up being rude, I can pick up on that. Yeah, but, like, him, he's like... You should do some more semi-auto. Yeah, and I, I didn't mean that his was bad. Oh, so. okay. okay. Okay, so is this controversial, this one? Sure. He's so, like, intense on this. So, Eric... Um, Ciarmella. I bet it's Charmella. Okay. Charmella? No, I think it's Charmella. All right. Anyway, Eric Charmella says, Who does Hornady think they are? China? Talk about ripping off intellectual property. Not only did Robert Whitley at ARX do all the R&D on developing a 6mm cartridge for the small frame AR platform, he shared his knowledge with the world. From the burger bullets, he prefers to case dimensions and loading details, including primers, powders, and even how to mod your magazine followers so they will feed his cartridge. You know, I really appreciate his, his really good grammar. Yeah, he, this is a well-written comment. Very it's, well. It's like a novel. And he has, like, the correct punctuation, like commas in the correct places. Periods where they need to be, capitalized letters. He's doing well. Things he, are spelled right. It's not hard to read. No. <laughs> but he says, he continues on and says, Nice ad campaign, Hornady. Pretend you came up with something new just by slapping a cool acronym on someone else's work. Advanced rifle cartridge. Advanced achieves results never before delivered from the AR-15 platform with the ultimate blend of system weight. What a load, literally. (laughs) You did a pun there, see that? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, and we'll see, I did respond here. Um, So my exact quote, Hornady changed some things. A 6.5 Grendel would not chamber in this. It is a tuned chamber for this cartridge. Yeah, other people tried something similar, but Hornady stepped up and brought it to the market. So that's where my quote ends there. Um, there are wildcatters out there, but there's a big difference between starting a wildcat and then doing what Hornady did, which is fully backing the, the cartridge out there. So good on Hornady for bringing it to market, despite there being controversy over this. Then another funny thing is that why does it? Why is there controversy over a new cartridge? Like for real, all the comments on here say we don't need another cartridge. Stop it. Okay, then. D- don't get one. You don't need it. <laughs> yeah, if you have a 6.5 Grendel and you love it, shoot your 6.5 Grendel. Yeah. I, I own one too. And uh, yeah, your 2.24 Valkyrie, I still am a big fan of my Valkyrie, but I also like the Arc. Like They, they do slightly different things. <laughs> so Idaho Rogers USMC? Yeah, he's my buddy. Oh, was this a good one? Well, I, I, I'm confused. <laughs> Maybe I should read, read, read his comment. Yeah. All right, all right. See what the replies are. Okay, cool. Um, nope, no way. Not going there. I'm not going to get pulled into another flavor of the month club on a new cartridge. This is how manufacturers keep feeding themselves the big money on basically trying to renovate the or reinvent the wheel. Sorry. I'm kind of moving past this stuff. 
Oh, great video, good sales pitch, but no, always enjoying watching your shooting. Okay, this is a good one because he's literally just saying like, you know, this isn't for me, but he's not like insulting you or anything else. He's just saying, you know what, I'm not gonna go down down this route. Yeah, absolutely, and like I say, uh, what, scroll back up real quick. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Idaho Rogers USMC, like I've talked with him quite a bit. He's commented on almost every one of my videos for the past three years. Nice. So I know who he is. We're, we're good buddies. Um, cool. He also has a channel. Um, he posts very occasionally. But yeah, he's completely right. If he doesn't want to buy the cartridge, that's fine. You don't have to. But he dropped his opinion out there, but he was still polite and said uh, he enjoys watching the videos. So See. I appreciate him watching all the videos. Even though you guys don't agree on things, you can still be friends. I saw a meme on that the other day, like just because we don't, What's the comment? It's every, we can disagree and still be friends. Exactly. Completely. And, and a big part of what I'm doing with these videos, I'm not being paid by Hornady. I'm not no, being, I'm not, not being, at all. <laughs> I'm not being paid by UN to precision. Um, they did help me with a rifle, but what, what the point is, is I've been on the opposite end of when something new comes out and I want information. So I'm in a position where I'm able to help get information out there. And so this is literally just like, hey guys, this is what it is. This is what it does. If you want one, you can get one. That, that's all there is. The biggest sales pitch I have going on here, here is check out the link for Uinta Precision. Yeah. That, that's my sales pitch. If you don't like the Uinta stuff, that, okay. Check them out. If it's not for you, that's fine. Like I'm not saying go buy the 6R. You have to buy a Uinta Precision. It's not that at all. It's just these are the guys who helped me, so go check them out. Well, it's my favorite thing. Like, uh, this comment builds into that, is that all these people think you're getting paid some, like, huge amount of money by these companies. Unless Logan's hiding this money from me somewhere, I, we don't see any of this money. So this is clearly just for Logan and for you guys to, you know, get an understanding of, you know, these new things but hornady didn't pay us one cent so this comment's my favorite um i'm buying one because it's it's kind of those like well, good it, and bad ones the funniest part is he's like i am buying one but then at the end of it he's like don't try and sell me on this shit <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. So, it's like know. this one it's like what do you want from me then so he says i'm buying one but logan you seem like you're trying to sell us this cartridge really hard like Hornady is sure paying you big bucks, more so than any other scope of gun or ammo or cartridge before. I hope not. You are a good channel and quite knowledgeable. I sure I sure enjoy your videos. Don't turn into a product pimp. Yeah, which and, is fair enough to say. Yeah, that's fair. Um, I do think it's funny that he he bought that. Go go back to that one. I'm curious what the replies were. But on that, uh, as far as the six art goes, why I got into it like I did. Um, I actually had this rifle before Hornady announced what was going on because they worked with Uinta Precision in product development. Um, obviously, I shoot a lot of Uinta Precision stuff. They asked if I would be interested in trying it out, and I was all for it. So I had videos ready to go live before the release date. So that's how I was kind of like right there at the beginning is because I actually had the rifle beforehand. Okay. So, he made me mad now with these comments. So Logan responded back just kind of saying, hey, you have the right to your own opinion. Like, Horny had nothing to do with this. Pretty straightforward. I'll what? stand behind them. Just, just read it. Oh, okay. Well, he says, you're free to have your own opinion, but my cha on my channel, you will have to decide for yourself what you think I'm really up to. Hornady has nothing to do directly with my channel. I'm supporting you with its precision. This is as a thank you to their support. I've been shooting you into rifles for a few years now. And they have proven to work great for what I do. So I stand behind them pretty straightforward. Then this, he's just like, because mm, Trey, what, what do you do for a living? Okay. Get on here and troll people. So he goes, West Desert Shooter, you are right. Everyone has their own opinion. I will ask you one question. Are you a professional YouTube guy? Or do you have a regular job? Like a blue collar worker? Like a machinist? Also, I wanted him like... Apparently, he doesn't think you know what a blue-collar worker is because then he goes and lists a bunch of things. But then he goes, or a white-collar worker, like a lawyer or a doctor. I know laundering shooter and former sniper Ryan Kleckner is a YouTuber, but he's also a lawyer and a book author. So do you have a real job or just YouTube? What? Well, 
<laughs> this makes me like laugh so hard. Like, well, first off, it's none of his damn business, what right? I'm doing. But at, secondly, yeah, I work in the firearms industry, so I mean, and I also help them produce videos, which it's no big secret. I it's kind of obvious who I work for out there, and uh, you'll see my videos, but. Yeah, if if he just kind of scoured the internet a little bit, it would not be hard to figure out what I had going on. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll move past this one. <laughs> I don't need to light him up for that one. Um, I do see a lot of comments on here, just like you know, not another cartridge, not another cartridge. So I think we've reached the end of your uh, horn of the ARC. So it's been fun reading these comments. Yeah, let's jump over to another video then. All right, guys, so moving on to the next video is going to be the 1.25 miles Tika 7mm SOM video. This one was my first video to really start gaining traction really fast. And uh, it was actually a video I had shot, and it, I didn't make many videos after this for a couple months. So it kind of just sat there and just gained traction and traction. But with YouTube and their whole stupid demonetization thing, I actually fought the monetization at uh, 630,000 views. I put in a submission to say, hey guys, um, review this video, see if we can get some monetization on it. Because at like 650,000 views, I had made like six bucks, which is just garbage compared to my other videos. Some of my other videos, most of them lately get absolutely nothing point is that after I fought it, they just flatlined and killed this video. It has not got any views since then. So unfortunately, YouTube just kind of hung this one out to dry and they're not sharing it at this point, but it got 650,000 views in like three months. So we're going to run through the comments on here. There's quite a few. Um, there's a lot of congratulations because people knew I'd been working towards this for a while. And so just as upfront, I really appreciate that from anyone who's followed along and said congratulations, I, I really do appreciate that. It's been awesome. So let's get into a little bit of the trolls and just the guys asking uh, technical questions. We'll see what we can come up with. Yeah, but first I want to say one of the top comments on here is from Track Themselves. You got to talk into the mic. Oh, not talking towards the mic. My bad, guys. So that we can later hear, I can't hear you, in some of the comments later on this video. So Absolutely. Cool. Yeah. We'll get into those videos. These ones seem to they be able to hear you. It's some of your... Uh, most of my outdoor videos, the audio is good. Yeah. <laughs> unless, yeah. Unless there's wind, it's good. But it's like your, your indoor videos when you're just like chatting, like your most recent video you put out. Oh my God. Okay. So it is, it is harder to hear if you are watching YouTube on the computer, but who does that? Who watches YouTube <laughs> on the computer anymore? You just, you, I mean, yes, you are still going to have people that watch YouTube on your computer, but most people have it easily accessible on your phone and for whatever reason your phones you can hear your the audio, audio a lot the better. audio sucks on the phone so you can hear it better but granted i i know what you guys are talking about yes. the audio is not as good as it could be i'm working on getting a mic there you go <laughs> um but the room is just very it echoes a lot so yeah. even with a microphone i think you'd still get a lot of the echo something i'm working on anyway we'll get back into the 1.25 <laughs> miles um yeah first comment i pinned it up here so that everyone could see it uh who said the comment what did they say um so it's from track optics themselves so it says pretty honored to be sitting on top of the rifle for this great shot awesome job yeah absolutely one thing i can be quoted on for this 2000 yard shot is you cannot bullshit your way to 2000 yards all the components have to be legitimate and work really well and tracked is a company that I trusted to get the job done and it absolutely did from my first shot elevation was dead on all I did was hold 3M away further right from the first shot and I got on target so tracked was right there for me and that was maxed out on elevation plus a holdover so not only did it tracked correctly all the way until I maxed out the elevation as well as the adjustments in the scope lined up with what the scope uh, reticled says so like tracked is on the money and I've got a review coming out from them soon on their new 34 mil but yeah that that's an awesome scope and I really appreciate tracked jumping in the comments there <laughs> this is this is a good one so he says great shot man uh, but try having a camera nearby the target to capture the impact it will look awesome um, so then a, a lot of your I don't think you responded on this one but all of your 
subscribers did and everyone's talking about um then the camera's gonna get shot this isn't a slow-mo vid camera could easily get shot in an uncontrolled environment like this put the camera on a tripod behind ballistic glass on a weighted down stand <laughs> yeah let me just haul out my <laughs> extra ballistic glass i have laying around <laughs> oh but then uh pep luke or lluc whatever he says so what you now have GoPro style cameras for less than 50 bucks with more than enough quality. Two hours of recording in 16, whatever, I mean, tiny footprint. If you manage to hit one of those, you can take that as an offering to gods of chaos. Basically, he's saying, yeah, you can shoot your camera. Who gives a shit? It's not that expensive. Yes. But I'll tell you why I don't have a camera up near the target. It's because it takes a long time to drive 1.25 miles away in the desert environment. And so by the time I hit record, and drove out, sitting in the sun, it's very likely that thing will overheat or the battery will die. It's just really hard to get a consistent capturing of the footage on the GoPros. I've run into quite a few problems with those. And uh, yeah, so what I see you're looking at a comment here is from one of my buddies. Let's, what did he say? So from 243 Outdoors, he says, awesome stuff. I was cheering when I saw the hit. Awesome shooting, brother. Yeah, so 243 Outdoors, Josh, um, he's put out a ton of awesome videos, and he himself is a great shooter, so be sure to check out 243 Outdoors. I don't see as much coming out of his channel anymore, but that's all right. Sometimes you just get burned out a little bit, and you got to do what you got to do. But I really liked uh, the content up to that point. Um, anybody saying anything good here? Um, a lot of fantastic shooting, dude. Oh, this guy from Andrew P. All right, what's he got to say? Poofed. Is that how you say that? <laughs> I <I'd> say <laughs> Whatever yeah. that sound is. I could have done that with my Mossberg 702 Plinkster. Okay, so this one's clearly a joke because that's a 22 LR. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah, he, he's just joking. Oh, okay. See, I don't know those things. Yeah. Sorry, Andrew P. <laughs> no, he's, he's good. That's a, that's a funny comment. I laugh uh, all of them are saying impressive on the delay that four seconds yeah let, let's talk about that real quick uh oh, 1.25 miles if you shoot by the time the bullet arrives on target it's just around three seconds maybe a little over um three to four seconds and then sound travels nearly one mile per five seconds so three seconds to the target just over five seconds for the sound of the ting to travel back I think on the audio, it was like nine seconds where I could actually hear the bong as it came back. So when you're out there shooting, it's it's pretty crazy. Yeah. It's a long time from when you shoot to when you hear the ring. What are you giggling at? You, <laughs> you found something that's making you laugh. <laughs> well, just, just knowing you, and I love you, but you do like to talk. And then you like, so when Logan's making videos, he often says, okay, I'm going to make this one be like four minutes. And then he comes back out. Yeah, I couldn't do it. It was like 10 minutes. I just kept talking. <laughs> I couldn't cut it down anymore. It's like this this comment makes me laugh because he quotes you. Um, Nomadic K says in quotations, let's get to it. But then he says, keeps talking. Ha ha. So even though Logan says, let's get to it, it should show some videos but uh, or shooting. And then Logan keeps talking. So that Yeah, so the intro of the video, hey guys, I'm out here shooting 2,000 yards. Let's get to it. And then I kept talking after that. <laughs> Which, uh, yeah, the more I've learned about shooting, the more I want to talk and share with, and that just makes longer videos. Like, the trend on my channel has gone from, like, three minutes, five minutes, and now it's just, like, every damn video is a 15-minute video. It's really hard not to. It's really hard for me to not make a 10-minute video. Do you feel that you have to make shorter videos in order to get people intrigued, or, like, they don't want it's too much content? Why do you, why are you trying to cut it down? I just don't want them to be bored with ah. the bullshit I'm talking. So, like, yeah, I'm just a five-minute video, seven-minute video is a lot easier to watch than a 15-minute video, but I just, oh, man, it's hard to, it's hard to get there. Yeah, let's, let's read that comment. All right, this is from Demolition Blue Cheese. Great right. name. Great name. <laughs> uh, in quotations... Is that Mag Magneto Speed Target Hit Indicator? And he says, um, what? Yeah, so Magneto Speed was actually uh, a Magneto. Support yeah, Magneto Speed was a supporter of this project. Um, I hit up multiple companies for this specific goal of shooting 2,000 yards, and I knew that spotting my hit may prove to be difficult in my, uh, in my previous shoots. So he's asking what I meant by a Magneto Speed Target Hit Indicator. 
basically it's a light that velcros to your steel target and when you smack that steel it will blink at you and let you know that you hit it or if you're close enough with a supersonic crack it'll flash yellow if you have your settings set to that but uh yeah so if I, when i hit the target it flashes red at me and it's way easier to tell if i've hit my target so shout out to magneto speed they also make really cool chronographs so be sure to check those guys out if you need a precision rifle chronograph all right i think this is a, a good one to ask you didn't answer it a year ago how dare you you just left him hanging uh chris martin asked hey man been watching your channel for a while really appreciate the walkthroughs and that you share your load development and stuff I was just wondering, how often do you go to the range to test new loads? So that's actually changed over time. Um, when I first started the channel, it was really only that. That's like all I really did. And it seemed like for about a year and a half, I would make excuses not to shoot long range because I didn't have my load dialed in enough. And I got sick of it. And I was like, you know what, man? I'm just going to go shoot far and have fun because that's really what I wanted to do. And so... Like, even on my new rifles, I kind of don't do that much load development anymore. But I, I don't really have an answer on how often I do it. As little as I can, really, at this point. I like just shooting far and enjoying enjoying shooting long range. But uh, Jade's just scrolling through all these co congratulations <laughs> comments, and I, I really appreciate that, guys. It, that was a fun one. Ooh, sucker. Oh, I can't say this on here. I said his name is. <laughs> <laughs> you can skip over his name. It's no. a good one though. <laughs> I feel like I need to read it now because everyone's gonna wonder. All right, go for it. <clears throat> I want to hear you say. No. Also, his picture is really scary. Yeah. I need to see if he has more. Do you think he's just like a a subscriber? Do you think he has video? I don't want to because based on his name, I don't want to get into his channel. No, you don't. So from suck a thick dick. <laughs> S U C C A space T H I C D I C C. See that he should have used T H I C C. That way I can be nice and thick. Thick. <laughs> anyway, he thinks you're a tool. Uh, he just puts quotations tool. Maybe he likes the band. I don't know. Ooh, that. Or he thinks your gun's a neat tool. I don't know. Yeah. It could that, be mean a lot of things. He, yeah, didn't, exactly. he kind of left his hand there. It, yeah, that's like a it's like a piece of art. You can interpret it how you want. <laughs> With the uh, yeah, sorry. Dude. People asking where my shooting spot is. Uh, not gonna tell you. It's on public land. You're welcome to go find it if you can go find it. <laughs> I don't even shoot there anymore. I still don't give that up. <laughs> uh, someone says you can. Or, why don't you bring that one up? The, the Presley one. Oh, okay. So Preslav Nedvog, I slaughtered that. Nedjelakov. Yes, so sorry. He says, no way. You can actually see the heat wave bullet, or from the bullet. Yeah, so what that is, is that is what I refer to as bullet trace. As the bullet flies through the air really fast, it distorts the air that it's passing through, and it creates a blur through it. And uh, he's just talking about how the camera caught that. And absolutely, you can record that and... Uh, you can definitely see it in some of the videos. I've seen the sweet spot is about 400 to 600 yards. Once you get out past that, kind of the arc goes out of the frame of my camera typically. And so you'll just see a little blur jet up to the top of the screen and then disappears. But uh, at 400 yards, you can usually watch it go all the way to the target. A lot of people want to shoot with you. Yeah. I've, yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, meeting a stranger out in the desert with a bunch of guns <laughs> typically doesn't sound like a great idea. Um, I've done it. Uh, me and David went out and shot. Uh, shout out to the Copper Pill. He brought out his uh, uh, what, the Scar 308 16 inch, and he had never shot at a thousand yards, so I helped him get that done, and he did a great job. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> oh, demolition! Blue cheese came back. He made more than one comment on this video. Uh oh, here we go again. Uh, um, he says, quotation, cheap eBay, e I can't talk now, um, cheap eBay bipod is the only thing I understood him say. He's literally talking Greek. And then you get the internet <laughs> trolls, and then the guy responds to him, not literally. <laughs> For whatever reason, literally got into like this debated thing that people got into. <laughs> he's That's literally right. not talking Greek. I get what he's saying, though, just like, 
I'm kind of getting into the details and nerding out, and he's like, I don't know what the hell this guy's talking about. That's so, true. Yeah, he's talking to me. I get it. That's, That's funny. a funny comment. But I just like that he, like, came back. <laughs> oh, man, there's so many comments on here. Good. I, I love comments. That I don't care how many... If I got a video that got 400 views, but it had 400 comments, I would take that over a 100,000 view video with five comments. Absolutely. I just like talking with people. Yeah. Oh, man. Jay's scrolling through again. Oh, I can't read this one. This was in, like, Arabic. Uh, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Maybe. Ooh, that looks more like... No, I think Russian. That looks like Russian. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Mm. And I wanted to come up with some obscure, like, Chechenian or something, but I, I don't know. You're okay, just... here, here's one. Uh, I remember this... I remember this from over a year ago. In the video, I'm shooting, uh, and I'm like, yeah, guys, really impressed with this mash grade machine gun. And he, so Brian Smith gets in here and comments, he's like, he called his rifle a quote-unquote match grade machine gun. And then he puts all these laughing faces. uh, But what he doesn't realize, the company who put the rifle together was match grade machine. So I'm not calling it a machine gun. It's the company match grade machine, and then I said gun afterwards because they put that together for me. So that's what was going on there. Um, so he just had a little bit of a misunderstanding. Um, August, that's all his name is, says... Original. Yeah. So somehow I felt like when the video cut, it was to hide the fact that he pulled the trigger without locking the bolt. I don't know where he's talking about in the video, but... He's saying you're hiding things. Hang on, go back. I want to see what my reply was. Uh, I've pulled... This is what I said. Nope. I've pulled triggers with safeties on, but not a bolt up. Somehow I felt like the video... Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I guess like he's referring to, at one point, the video jumped from the bolt up to closed. Oh. I, I cut a lot of dead space out of my videos because long range shooting involves a lot of patience and aiming the rifle and very carefully getting a trigger squeeze off so sometimes you'll see the vast majority of my videos you will see uh, cuts in the edit and that's what's going on there is I'm just getting rid of dead space so you're welcome <laughs> they're pretty boring if I just go unedited stuff I really wish we could read these that are in a different language someone laughs and says they could shoot 1.25 miles of the 45 interesting I'd like to see that sure the bullet's got to land somewhere. Yeah. Cool, thanks for sharing. Hell yeah. Wow, unbelievably awesome. Keep it up. Well, I don't know if you have very many bad comments. This is a pretty good video. Just lots and lots of uh, encouragement. Right here, great shot. Watching from Russia. So I've got Russian viewers. That's cool. That's pretty neat. I want to go there. Why Russia? Well... Groovy, keep shooting and making videos. I've continued to do that, so I've taken his advice. All right, well, I think, uh, oh, I like that everyone laughs at your bipod. <laughs> yeah, and I point that out in the video that I bought a stupid little bipod, but you know what? That stupid thing helped me get on target, so it, it worked. But, of course, now I, I get to snivel and laugh at cheap bipods because now I own a Skypod, so now I flex on people with... Uh, with Atlas bipods, they ain't nothing. I got Skypod. What's up? Mm. <laughs> totally just being a smart ass there, guys. I still use my stupid little bipod on my other guns. Um, Jeff D says, "Hope you're on my side." Yeah, I hope he's on my side too. <laughs> Sweet. Man, all these comments are just. Yeah. Ton- oh. Tons of. Uh, Tons of people saying just good work, and I really appreciate that. That doesn't make any sense. Oh, that's oh, that's a nice comment. Okay. <laughs> like, wait. Uh, someone's talking about trucks. I don't know why. Oh, here, here's a comment that I get all the goddamn time. You want to bring it up? Oh! <laughs> Not all okay. the time, but at least every month. And I Two didn't, or three months. I didn't believe it. So, I mean, this was brought up by my mom. So, um, she had commented before to me that sometimes in, in different angles or pictures that Logan looks like Peyton Manning. And I, I don't see it. But then I was like, what? Because then all of a sudden, 
he kept getting these comments on YouTube. So yep. this one from Danny B says, Peyton Manning got good aim. So like <laughs> apparently other people see it too. So you got to let us know if you think Logan looks like Peyton Manning. I I just wish I was on the pay level that Peyton Manning was. I got nothing against the guy. Like yeah. It's all good. But the other one I see a ton of is that I sound like John Krasinski, who is uh, Jim in the office. Yeah. I see a ton of comments like, Whoa, you sound just like Jim in the office. Which, again, Jim's a good dude. I relate to him. It's all good. I, I'm all for being Jim. Jim. Or, I mean, he is other characters. He does other badass movies. Like, Jack. actual, like, military movies. Jack Ryan, yeah. And then the... Benghazi. Benghazi, yeah. Yeah, Jim's cool. I'm, yeah. I'll be Jim. And, I mean, my personal fave, The Quiet Place. So, anyway, John Krasinski. So, yeah, if you think Logan looks like Peyton Manning... Uh, Drop a comment. Drop a comment. Let us know. <laughs> oh, too oh, here, there's cool. another guy. Awesome match grade machine gun. See what, uh, see what my response was to that. Ooh, okay. It says two replies. Yeah. Uh, so you just replied back to him and let him know. Match grade machine is the company who built it. It is also a gun. It is an MGM gun. There we go. But then he also replied back. Oh, okay. Make, thanks for the reply. Nice shot, by the way. See, you were trying to See, cut that, down the troll. That's what I was talking about earlier. This guy was like, oh, yeah, haha, dumbass. And then I comment back, and I give him the attention, and he's like, oh, yeah, that, yeah, we're good. I'm like, sometimes it just seems like they need a the little bit of attention. Mm-hmm. Here we go. A uh, comment from Harley Designs. Um, he actually runs a really awesome RC channel where, like, he does remote control crawler stuff. Mm. And I think he just crossed over 50,000 subscribers, so... There you go. Harley dropped in here. Uh, I dropped some comments on his video, so he just checked out my channel. Um, I always appreciate that as well. Um, I definitely like seeing the other content creators in there. But uh, check out Harley. He does a lot of cool stuff. I'm also a fellow RC rock crawler nerd, so I do that on the side as well. All right. Someone asked, is 1.5 miles next? No. um, I just scoped out a spot, and it's not 1.5 miles. Well, I guess... 1.25, 1.25, it'll probably be closer to 1. 1. 1.7 miles. Um, I found a spot. I'm going to go out and shoot 3,000 yards next. Um, since I've moved from where I shot the 1.25 miles, I haven't really gone out looking for like a long range, and I just found one. So, yeah, I found a spot to shoot 3,000 pretty easily, and then 3,500 is a possibility. I got to kind of consider what I want to do there. But, yeah, long shots coming up. I'm excited. Haven't done it in a while. I can't handle the uh, um, the grammar on some of these things. Because, he, I mean, he was complimenting you. He says, you're looking so smart, but you're as in possessive. You're instead of you are. But it's okay. He also didn't spell looking correct. So. Oh, he did. I missed that. He says, you're locking so smart. Oh, but he, but he thinks you're looking so smart. Yeah, I scroll back up real quick. To what one? Uh, oh. Some code name, whatever. It says, damn, I wish I lived in the U.S., just not the same as here in the U.K. What's interesting about, there's, the U.K. is cool. They do have rifles over there. Um, what's interesting is they'll talk shit on Americans being like, oh, you guys don't get suppressors? Haha, <laughs> I can just go down and buy one. And at the same time, like, yeah, it takes us a long time to get suppressors, but Americans can have semi-auto rifles and privately own them and keep them in their homes. So there you go. Right back at you. But at, also at the same time, if like U.S. ever goes crazy, I'm down with just bolt guns in England and easy to buy silencers. I'm all for that. Hmm. Here we go. Someone from Scotland dropped by. Pretty cool. What kind of bag do you use to rest the back of the gun on? That's a great question. See what my response was. I'm curious. Here we go. So it says, I made it myself. It is full of rice. But also, uh, I'm skipping out on details there. My mother helped me uh, sew that bad boy up. So my (laughs) my mom's helping me with my tactical needs. So shout out to my mom for helping me make my rear rest. She also helped me with my shooting mat, the tan one. Um, Yeah, that's that's all homemade. Sometimes it's just easier to make it yourself. Which, thanks to your mom, because your wife is not good in the sewing areas of life so (laughs) and don't get don't get me wrong i can i can get down behind a sewing machine and kind of put things together but i i mess it up a lot 
Someone asked, can you train me? Eh, not really looking into training people right now. I think you're more just educating what you already know. Yeah, sharing what I do. This was satisfying as hell. Here's one I've seen quite a bit recently. Why do you hardly ever use your magazine? That was a comment from a week ago. Oh. On the Tika, um, basically shooting this far, if I feed out of a magazine, it's going to put pressure on the bullet. And I want to make sure those bullets stay as straight as possible for this long of a flight. So I single load them and just close them into the chamber. There's lots of other videos, like with my Uinta Precision. Sometimes my bullets I've loaded for the 6.5 Creedmoor are too long for the magazine, so I'll single, single feed there. In the F-Class matches, you have to single feed. On a 6 Dasher video I did with my work, uh, I single feed there because the magazine spacer for the 6 Dasher and a regular AICS mag. It's something that pops up quite a bit, but I mean, sometimes that's what it happens. Right there at the top. Uh, B Tomph. Job well done, man. Your yardage is your ammo. Oh, what yardage is your ammo doing transonic or going trans? Want to read that? Because apparently I can't. <laughs> yeah, so B B T O M F says, Job well done, man. What yardage is your ammo going transonic? Uh, I believe it's right around 2,100 yards, somewhere in there. But he's got a channel. He shoots long range. He's, he's kind of a funny dude. He gets in there. He swears a lot. But it's still good content with long range precision rifles. This is a weird comment. Um, I don't even know how to pronounce the name. But he says there was a kid playing near the target. <laughs> um, no. Yeah. Yeah. So when I get comments like that kind of crap, like anything that will try and like other people would read and be like, wait, why would this guy ever do this? So he said there's a kid playing near the target. My one word answer was nope, <laughs> because there's absolutely nobody downrange. I would never shoot downrange if there's someone near the target. No. The end. Like, and yeah. we even have to move all the stupid cows that find their way <laughs> onto where we shoot. Yeah, cows are big, dumb animals, and so are <laughs> antelope. You shoot downrange, and then they walk into your range wondering what you're doing. Yeah. Lo I've pain I've pain watched hands. Logan moo cows away. So if you uh, just get that in your mind right there, flapping your arms, yelling obscenities at them, get the hell out of here, you big dumbass, stuff like that. Yeah, I'm guilty. I've done it. Ever try Burger 195S in the seven millimeter caliber? Yep. So what he's referring to there, Burger 195 grain uh, Elite Hunters, and no, I have not. I I load the 183s. I figure. The slight gain in velocity versus the minimal increase in BC with the 195s. I'd rather just shoot my bullet a little bit faster. Mm. Okay, so here's someone being an ass. Um, I won't read this one off. And okay, I just have to let you guys know. Apparently, I'm old now and I don't understand slang when it comes to texting or whatever. So I'd ask Logan what this meant the other day, but... I now learned what SMH means, so, <laughs> <laughs> wow, shake my head. Um, claims the first two misses are him dialing in. Okay, fair enough. Scores a direct hit on a third. Claims it's all skill. Proceeds to miss the next 15 shots and blames the bullets. So how exactly were you able to dial in the first three shots using inconsistent ammo? Well, I can tell you why. It's because the first few shots were consistent, including even beyond the third shot. And uh, yeah, I changed lots of bullets that were made a year apart and the bullet shape was actually significantly different. In the end, guys, it's all just shooting for fun anyway. If I And I put up the video actually missing my target, so I'd say it's pretty, pretty good on my end. Yeah. But uh, I mean, I just show what happens. I've put up multiple videos where I go out, try and hit a target and I don't hit my target at all here we go <laughs> oh, this is my favorite uh danny miller says uncle rico could have thrown a football over that mountain <laughs> <laughs> that's not the comment i was reading oh though. that's a great one though <laughs> that one made me laugh i love napoleon yeah. dynamite all right yeah. what one were you listening early? how many tries before the filming oh what did i say sometimes it's fun for me to go back and read my own answers from a year ago you said none i started recording when i started shooting the shadow is barely behind the target I can't see misses if the target was in a shadow. Ooh, back that up with some science right there. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, people are really just mad at your tripod. That it's cheap and apparently it's sabotaging you. 
Okay. <laughs> okay, okay. Some guy, yeah, some guy's talking shit on my bipod, and the guy gets in. Yeah, he calls my bipod a tripod, making fun of it, and then someone else gets in there, and he's like, it's a bipod, dude. And he says, try means three. Trace. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Oh, it's freezing up, honestly. Uh, okay. The, oh, that's a good question. How often do you guys clean your guns? Right after the range or day before shooting? When do you clean them? So I did reply here. I'm betting I said I never cleaned it. What? I, have I, you still never cleaned this gun? I still have <gasps> never cleaned my, my saw. Yeah, I don't shoot it a ton. It's probably got... 200 yeah it's got 200 rounds through it because i've only bought two 100 packs of bullets for it and i just bought my my number three pack so i'm just starting to shoot rounds towards 300 it's only got like 200 rounds down the tube um get the dog 445 wants to know if you're using an app to measure the distance uh, he's asking, what app are oh. you using to measure the distance? It's a $3 app. It is called Measuring Tape for iOS. And that thing is the best range finder I've ever used because it just tracks you with GPS. Most laser range finders are limited to distance. And when I made this video, like the, the really far range finders just weren't out yet. Um, where like they really just struggle out there. But a GPS, I can, I can go miles and it will track me for miles and it's just straight line distance. It's perfect for long range shooting. So uh, yeah, just that little measuring tape app. It works awesome for the extreme long range shots because I have to go up to my target to set it up anyway. So by the time I drive out to where I'm shooting, I set my pin at my target, drive away, and it'll tell me my distance, which is also nice as I'm driving, it'll tell me how far away I am so I know when to stop. All right, we should be getting close to the end of these uh, comments here, but this one's kind of cool. Uh, AWMA Ace commented in my mother tongue, SOM is the name given to fermented pork fat. Kind of a delicacy. There you go. Yeah, and I responded to that. <laughs> <laughs> Which I think is kind of a funny comment. Just well, saying. this will put savory meat on the table, so I'll go with it. There you go. You learn something new. The seventh SOM is a delicacy. You know that. Yes. All right. Well, I think we've... Uh, People talking about Flat Earth. We're hitting the end of the comments here. <laughs> oh, shoot. Oh. All right, guys. So we're moving on to our third video, which this one's got just over a million views at this point in time. It is the Creedmoor, Psalm, and Norma Mag at one mile. The reason I'm using these uh, two videos with over a million views is simply because there's more comments on them. It gives us more time to discuss. But uh, yeah, we've got some interesting comments in here. A lot of people commenting about the gear, about our skills, and things of that nature. So let's dive into it. Um, I actually went out here shooting with my buddy Kyle from KO Customs. So be sure to check out KO Customs on Instagram. And uh, we also brought out Kyle's buddy. Uh, he goes by Fabio, so we'll leave it at that. Um, yeah, Jade, what, uh, what comments have we got here? Well, I'm noticing a lot of people are, one, jealous of what we have here in the United States, being able to have the guns that we have, um, but also the space that we have to shoot in. And so I think we do live in a really good state um, to be able to shoot. A lot of people don't have the space that you have to make this happen. Absolutely, um, and that's a big reason why I share it, is uh, not everyone has access to it, so live vicariously where you can. Um, so I like to put out content on this. The I am lucky to live where I do, it just kind of so happened that way, and uh, I, I try not to take it for granted, I go out and enjoy it. Even people on the East Coast don't have access to and li land like this, they're all locked in in the forests, but uh, good fun here so what kind of comments are we seeing on this guy <laughs> uh, they're just like speechless really cool uh, I live in Florida and there are so many trees you'd be lucky to find 300 yards to free to shoot yeah so quick rundown on the rifles uh, starting off with the 6.5 Creedmoor that one is built on a American Rifle Company Mousing Field Action. Very nice action. And it's sitting in an MDT ESS chassis. It's got a Vortex Razor 
Gen 2 scope. So like very not high end build, really nice setup. Um, the middle rifle in the video is my own. It is the Tika 7mm SOM. We just spent a whole bunch of time talking about it, but it's a Tika action. It's got a 26 inch 7 SOM barrel on the end of it. Again, sitting in an MDT ESS chassis. And uh, in this video, it's got the Tracked Toric uh, Ultra HD 30 millimeter. And so very, very nice setup there. Uh, not, quite as, not quite as nice as Kyle's on the action side at least. But, uh, and then finally, um, who, we've, who we call Fabio here, he's shooting his 300 Norma mag, and that bad boy is an accuracy international. Um, those guys make just like the top of the line rifles, and I believe he also had a Razor Gen 2 scope on his, so super sweet setup there, no, no doubt about it. All right, so I thought this was an interesting comment. It's only two weeks ago, so. Um, everyone sh running suppressors. I miss hearing the sound of the gun. So your thoughts on that, because, yeah, in the video, I mean, I don't know. See, the thing about it is audio on a video, there's almost no difference between a can and a muzzle brake. But in real life, man, it is so much nicer to shoot with the can. And what's kind of funny about it is I really think there's something to it. Uh, the government makes it really hard to get suppressors, so people try really hard to get them. And if you have one, it's kind of cool. But, uh, Sydney! But uh, at the same time, like, your car comes with a really quiet muffler, and because, like, it's not allowed to be loud, a lot of people try and make their cars loud. So I think there's just something about going against the rules. But overall... None of us wore hearing protection that day out there shooting on the range with three big cartridges. Like, I would way rather have cans over not having cans. I don't know. There's not, like, these people are all really nice to you. <laughs> all uh, right. Sorry, guys. We uh, had to jump to a different video. Yeah, so this one is the 1,500-yard Milk Jug Challenge. And a little bit of a spoiler here, I do not connect with the Milk Jug at 1,500 yards, unfortunately. So I'm curious to see what the comments are on here because blatantly I'm just being honest and I'm curious what happens if I'm just honest with people <laughs> on the Internet. Uh, first couple of comments. Are, very first one, though, back on the topic of, so this is what Peyton Manning is doing with his retirement. <laughs> So, there you go. Logan, Peyton Manning. Um, Giant Killer says, note to self, next time I try to take out a bad guy, wait until he's fast asleep so I can miss a few hundred times. See, I can't quite tell if he's being an ass there or what's going on, so I'm, I guess I'm just going to have to no comment that one. Now, this one's funny. So, I mean, this is a milk jug challenge, right? He says, the joys of long-range shooting into tiny targets. Good job, but you're cheating. There was no milk in that jug. What did, did I say anything back to him? You did. You said, you said, if the plate wasn't white, I could, I could, but also a milk-filled jug costs more to blow up. <laughs> then he comments back, video should be called Blue, Wick, Blue Liquid Jug. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently I put uh, blue water in that one. Yes. All right, let's see here. When what? he said, I almost hit his girlfriend pro, I thought... Thought friendly fire? What? I don't know. I don't know. Someone's talking to someone else. Oh, okay. Uh, 243 Outdoors says, great attempt. Some days it just doesn't happen. I had never experienced the wind pushing the bullet up until I shot at U in Utah. There's not much you can do other than get a couple shots off quick with the same wind conditions. You're exactly right on the difference in difficulty. The further you go out, you'll get it next time. Yeah, I actually, I've, I haven't tried since then. It's been over a year. So I, I guess I need to go out and try 1,500 yards on the milk jug and see what I can get done. Yeah, so let's see. Uh, looks like the wind is challenging. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, so touch more on the wind. I was shooting... I ended up shooting six different challenges at this point. I did the 1,000, 1,200, and 1,500 of both the zombie head challenge and the milk jug challenge, and I had different ammo for each one, so it wasn't going to be exact same stuff. But, uh, yeah, so as the day 
went on and it took me more time to do each target, um, the wind was getting worse. So by the time it was the most challenging at the furthest target, the wind was at its worst. Let's see. That's a tough shot. Get the seven millimeter back and give it hell. Yeah, I I just completed my seven mil at that point, but I think it was my first version of it, and so I was excited. But that rifle wouldn't have done anything. All right, this is a good question. So Uncle Jim asked, "Nice try. Did you quit or did you keep shooting after?" I actually did quit. Um, I shot ten rounds at it, went up to look at it, and at that point it was hot, windy. I packed up and went home. <laughs> there you go. Uh, always good to see Uncle Jim's comments in there. I appreciate. People are really upset about you not using your magazine. See, exactly what I was just saying. Uh, People keep asking about that. Try feeding from your magazine. But in this one, the cartridges are too long for the magazine, as well as I want them visible for the challenge so you can see that I'm being honest about it. Well, let's see here. Long comment there. Yeah, yeah, too long for me to read. Skip. Um... Can anyone do this challenge, someone asked. Yeah. I mean, as long as you have the space and the setup, you can you can definitely go out and practice it and try it. But Long Range Shooters of Utah does put on an event where you can pay and go and do the official sanctioned milk jug challenge. Um, I have not done that, even though I live in Utah. But I've, I've talked to the price, and uh, he knows that I was being legit when I did mine. So I consider it, the ones that I did succeed in, I, I consider them a legit milk jug challenge. Uh, Eagle Eye Shooting said, you didn't walk away empty-handed. The practice and expiration... I think you meant experience. Oh, okay. I was a little confused about that. And experience gained is more than making contact. I tried 1,000 yards yesterday with a fail at 1,000. Ran out of ELDs and was using BTHP match. ELDs hold one MOA higher. I'm struggling right behind. Yeah, so that's okay. Kenny with Eagle Eye Shooting. He's just being real because I know that he's also a long-range shooter and he's not just a keyboard warrior. So he, he knows the struggles, and that's just kind of what he's saying, man, is that... And I definitely don't feel that I walked away empty-handed from this. I just didn't connect with my target. I still made the video. I still posted it up. And, uh, yeah, so I appreciate Kenny being positive there. Always appreciate Kenny in the comments here. Yeah... People talking about the bullet being subsonic at that range. It's right on the edge around there. <laughs> okay, this one's funny. All right, so Rick Bowen says, Do you like shooting very much? It seems like you do. If that is the case, put some safety glasses on when shooting so you can continue to enjoy it for a long time yet to come. Don't take anything for granted. I have seen some horrible things happen to many people when shooting without safety glasses. Not a very good example for the youngsters that watch this vid." who think it's okay to shoot without glasses, otherwise good video. Okay, so I mean, that's a fair point. Yeah, but... Um, Usually you have your glasses on. Your sunglasses. Yeah, if I'm not wearing my glasses, it's so that I can see the clearest image through the scope. And I was shooting 1,500 yards with a 12-power scope, so that's why I wasn't. Um, yeah, I, I see both sides of the coin. I mean, I'm using a bolt action, which is like the strongest action there is. If, if you're shooting pistols, safety glasses are a great idea. They're a good idea in everything, but yes, there are definitely times where I don't. And, yep, I don't always shoot with safety glasses. That's how it is. Yeah, I think that's it for your videos. I mean, there have been... My favorite comments are... Oh, gosh. When people talk about your music. <laughs> yeah. And, like, that was the beginning of your YouTube, like... You figuring out how to put videos together. People were so rude. It's, it's fine. Oh, yeah. here it is. Here's the scope zoom. This is my fave. No. That's, this isn't it? That's not the one. Because that one's got one million and the other one doesn't. Oh, It's darn. got like 600,000, which is still cool. I still think this... Is, you put music in this one, though, didn't you? No. Oh. I got rid of it because of the first video. I, I put that video together just as like, whatever. One of my buddies hooked me up with a piece of equipment, and I did it literally just to be like, okay, man, I appreciate it. Here you go. And that video blew up. Like, I spent almost no time on it, just kind of slapped it together, and it just raked in the views. And I was like, ah, crap. So, <laughs> see how it goes, unfortunately. Yeah. This one has a lot of comments. Is this the one? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the one. (laughs) 
See? Yeah, so I pinned a comment saying, hey, if you guys don't like the music, go to this video instead. It's better. I did it better. So. Yes. Let's see. Um, it says, believe me, your audio isn't terrible from the wind, as you claim. It's the music that drowns you out. Uh, let's see. So this this video is all about scope magnification at different ranges and how much you need. So most of the comments are going to be about that and just kind of talking back and forth on the amount of magnification required. Um, apparently this is the only video out there talking about the subject. So if you're curious about that, be sure to go check it out. Hey, you know what? People are defending you and saying... Um, quit crying about the music. I heard every word he said. The music had no lyrics and went well, which I appreciate because uh, it kind of goes along with like a couple of your videos lately that like, people are commenting that you can't hear. And I love that your subscribers will comment and say, heard him just fine. Turn up, <laughs> yeah. turn, turn up your volume. Like yeah, what yeah. is, what's happening? But uh, on the same token, I get, I know sometimes that the audio is not the greatest. In this video, I'm fully aware that it's not the greatest, but it's what it is. I don't have the files anymore to change it, but that's how it goes. Yes. Um, music is way too loud. Yeah. So, we want to wrap this one up then? Yeah. I think we're losing steam here, guys. A little bit. It's getting late. I'm about to go turn in for the night. But... All right, guys, this has just been kind of a chill podcast. I haven't done one in a while, so I appreciate Jade coming on here and hanging out with us, and uh, I really appreciate you guys sitting here and listening. Be sure to comment. Jump over to my Instagram if you're listening to just the podcast app. Uh, drop me a direct message. Comment on there as well. I'll definitely see it there. And uh, I think that's about it. Jade, you got anything to close out with? Don't be a troll. Or do. We'll talk about it I mean, later. that is true. I do yeah. enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> I do love reading through comments. I love reading everybody's positive comments, negative comments, controversial ones. So well, I mean, I'll tell you this. Most of the people, 99% of the people who are going to listen to this podcast are not the trolls because the podcasts almost never do well. They're like the hardcore guys who just want the content. So. That's true. That's true. So I appreciate everybody who's made it to this point. There's probably seven of you, so shout out to you guys. <laughs> but... uh yeah, I greatly appreciate it, guys. And I guess we will see you in the next Muzzle Blast podcast. See you later. See you later.